<laughs> Welcome to Delta Days. Uh, this is an online event where we're celebrating the Deltas. My name is Lindsay. I'll be your host today. We're here with JJ Coombs, our CEO and pharmacist. Today, we're going to be celebrating Delta 9 and talking, answering your burning questions about Delta 9. JJ, how's it going? It's going great. Having a great time on my Saturday, today, December 9th. Excited awesome. to talk about D9. <laughs> awesome. Uh, today, all day long, we're 20% online, 20% off on all products. But for subscribers, an extra 30% off on all D9 products. So go check it out. Um, and we're also going to be raffling off a $900 travel voucher to one lucky winner. So let's go. Lucky winner. All right. First question. How is hemp Delta 9 different from regular Delta 9? So it is not different. It is the same. Uh, it is identical. The molecule is a molecule. Um, whether you get Delta 9 from uh, cannabis, uh, whether you get it from oil, whether you get it from hemp, whether you get it from, you know, I don't know. I heard that there's this, these new plants that make CBD. Um, you know, maybe there's new plants that make Delta 9. It's still the same Delta 9, no matter where it comes from. This kind of goes back to like what we were talking about yesterday about it being synthetic or not. And vitamin C from an orange or vitamin C from a lab is the same thing. Exactly. Uh, low refresher on that. D9 equals D9. One plus one equals two. Two. Exactly. <laughs> or one equals one. would <laughs> probably be better. So, um, so when we say that it can derive Delta 9 versus cannabis derived Delta 9, like what, what is really the difference there? Okay. So I think, I think why people ask that is because of the farm bill, right? Um, Delta 9 from hemp is federally compliant. Delta 9 from cannabis is still technically federally illegal. Mm -hmm. On the hemp side, we do have to follow that rule, right? The rule that, you know, anything Delta 9 related that come from hemp has to be under 0.3% on a dry weight basis. So uh, I think that's what people are asking for when they're like, Oh, what's the difference between hemp, hemp Delta nine versus regular Delta nine. It's the same molecule. I think on the hemp side, we just have to, we just have to, not, I think, I know we just have to follow uh, the, the farm bill guidelines. But would you get more high from like, can like cannabis drive D nine versus hemp drive D nine? It's a good question. Uh, no. So uh, the thing with, with hemp derived D9 is that it's obviously in much smaller concentrations uh, where cannabis derived D9 is much higher concentrations, but you can separate all that out, right? If you end up with 95% Delta 9 distillate that's derived from hemp versus 95% Delta 9 distillate that's derived from cannabis, it's going to be the same. Nobody would ever be able to tell the difference. So it, and it's found in smaller quantities, but once you extract it and isolate it, it's, this, it could be up to the same potency. Is that hey, correct? Exactly. That's one hundred percent correct. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Is Delta Nine THC derived from hemp one hundred percent identical to THC derived from marijuana? And is the Delta Nine derived from hemp simply extracted from concentrates, or is it synth synthesized from other cannabinoids? All right. Again, great question. Um, I love this topic. I, I want to be able to educate people more on this. So Delta 9 THC derived from hemp is 100% identical to THC derived from marijuana. No questions asked that we can close it. We can close the book on that. Let's talk about how hemp derived Delta 9 can be made in different ways. So it can just be extracted from CBD biomass, right? But it would be in like three to 4% concentration. However, you can separate it out. So you could use chromatography to separate out the Delta nine from the CBD, and then you can basically refine that and get that up to a very high concentration to where it's basically identical in potency to cannabis derived Delta nine. You can also synthesize it through a semi-synthetic process. So it's an acid based kind of, it's an acid catalyzed reaction. Uh, you take CBD and you make it into a very high potency Delta nine THC. When you do it through that method, you do end up with a little bit of D8, um, although you do sometimes get D8 from natural cannabis extracted Delta 9 THC. Cool. I know you mentioned yesterday that you can't, that <clears throat> in flower, there is Delta 8 and that it's found And the same thing, I guess, with CBD, there's Delta 9 and CBD. Exactly. You'll find, you're yep. going to find CBD, you're going to find Delta 8, CBG, maybe yep. some THCB, depending on the strain. Um, but all those cannabinoids are always together. Is that right? 
Correct. I mean, I wouldn't say always together. Mm -hmm. Some strains it's found in, you know, more prominence in other strains. Like a sativa might have more t or might have THCV and an indica might not. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. When will Delta 9 be available for smoking and not just edibles? Oh, man, I, I would love for it to be available for smoking, but uh, we do have to follow the farm bill. Um, this would be changed, hopefully, after federal legalization. Um, but you never know what the states are going to do. You know, the feds legalize it and the states just say, OK, you know, do whatever you want, then we'll be able to sell it online um, and and all the stores that we currently sell Melifel products in. You could also catch Melifel in the rec market, right? You could. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming in 2024 in Maryland and Missouri. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Hi. What is the potency percentage ceiling on Delta 9 THC and THCA before engineering or synthetic processing comes into play? So this is an interesting question, right? Uh, potency ceiling on Delta 9 THC. So you can get all of these things up to 99% potency. It just depends how much you want to refine it. So in 99, because in that 1%. There's uncertainty. You know, there mm -hmm. could be something in there. You know, it could be 99.9. .9. To be honest, it's kind of hard to see. From, yeah. From an analytical perspective, there's there's a little bit of uncertainty. So I can't, with 100% certainty, say, hey, this is 100% pure Delta 9 because there's other cannabinoids in there that may loot in the same position. What does that mean? That means when you're looking at this from an analytical perspective, um, you're looking at different peaks. Uh, based on a multitude of factors. If you're uh, looking at an HPLC, you're looking at the polarity of the of the compound, and they might be exactly the same. So it looks like it's delta nine, but it might be XOTH. You know, it might be other other cannabinoids. So um, to go back to the question, when you extract delta nine from cannabis, it's not ninety nine percent. You need to go through refinement in order to get it into a higher potency, right? Typically what you'll see on the market, on the regulated market is anywhere from 85% up. Uh, if you're at 95% higher, it's, it's been refined through multiple steps of distillation or through chromatography. Um, THCA is crippling. So um, it's able to actually be, uh, have a higher potency ceiling than Delta 9. And so, that once, and with THCA, when you say crystalline, you mean um, that once you get into a certain Per, like purity it turns into like an isolate correct yeah so so it will it will form what's known as diamonds mm -hmm. uh thea diamonds so the di again there's so many different ways of extracting this uh or not extracting just like different processes that you can go through right the traditional way of extracting thea is through uh extraction through butane so you close with the tractor you extract the butane and from there you can Put that into um, an, a, a, a reactor for isolation. You can make THC isolate, or you can put that into a diamond miner, and pressure and saturation will basically um, create the diamonds and it'll form out of the solution, it'll fall out of the solution. That diamond is going to be like 98, 99%, depending on how many washes you do after that. Um, but anything that is crystalline can get can achieve a much higher potency ceiling than traditional distillates. So, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Delta 9 and uh, CBD are kind of on a seesaw. So if you raise one, the other one has to go down and vice versa, but they can't be separated. Is that true? What do you mean? I uh, elaborate on that. <clears throat> so like, um, and I, this was like from a cannabis documentary I saw on Netflix maybe 10, 15 years ago. So <laughs> my, I might even have the wrong interpretation, but they're saying that when you raise the level of one, the other one goes down, but you can't separate the two. So like, and you can't have more, I guess you can't have, obviously you can't have more than a hundred, but as one goes up, the other one goes down. Is that true? Is that why you can only get to like 99%? Um, no, but I mean, in, in, in the, the isomerization processes, you do, you start off with CBD, right? Mm -hmm. And you're trying to make, let's call it Delta eight. As, as the CBD goes down, the Delta eight goes up. Mm-hmm. Or even we're making delta nine as the CBD goes down, the delta nine goes up um, because you're basically eating away at that CBD. You're converting it into another molecule. But can you ever completely isolate the two and not have any of the other one? 
you, you can through chromatography. Um, it, it, it is hard to separate it. Out. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this distilling, very difficult to distill it out. You have to go through other, uh, other forms of refinement uh, in order to be able to get the CBD away from the THC. Okay. And, and people just aren't doing that because it's nece not necessary or, or are people doing that? Well, um, I mean, I, people aren't really doing that. Like on the hemp side, you, you do see that. What I see more on the hemp side isn't, isn't, uh, necessarily chromatography because chromatography is not exactly, um, it's, it's not the most efficient or scalable process. Mm -hmm. uh, what I see on the hemp side is that we do a forced degradation or an accelerated degradation. So what does that mean? All cannabinoids degrade eventually, right? So you add so heat? We're, we're accelerating the degradation of the Delta 9 into CBN. So, you know, when making um, broad spec CBD, that's how you do it. You, you basically oxidize the Delta 9 out so you can make a compliant uh, distillate product. Okay, cool. <clears throat> awesome. Good to know. How is Delta 9 THC processed by the ECS versus Delta 8 THC? So that's the endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid system. system. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, so Delta 9 THC actually isn't processed by the ECS. It binds to the ECS, right? Uh, specifically your CB1 and CB2 receptors. Delta 9 has a higher binding affinity than Delta 8. So that's why you might get anxiety with Delta 9. That's why you might feel like it's stronger than Delta 8 just because it, it doesn't bind as strongly to the CB1 receptor. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're both metabolized in the same way. Does and, binding affinity equal potency? Um, not necessarily, but it definitely makes it more intense. So if something doesn't bind as strongly to your receptor, it, you won't feel it as much. Okay, <clears throat> cool. How can these alternatives lower the cost for patients? That's a great question. So again, yesterday for D8 day, we talked about um, synthetic versus non-synthetic, right? The process that we do is a semi-synthetic process to make these cannabinoids. The reason why we do it this way rather than extract it from hemp biomass is because it's much more scalable and economical. So we are able to offer our products at a much lower cost than you would typically get at a dispensary. You can buy today, especially today, we have a great sale going on, but you can buy Delta 9 gummies, I think for less than nine bucks. Yeah. Less than 10 bucks. I mean, that's that's a great deal. But today, today you could get up to 50% off all D9 products. So definitely a good day for those. Yeah. So so I, I think by 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 having um, the processes that we have um, you know set forth, we are able to offer our cannabinoids and really all alternative cannabinoids at a much lower price. Cool. And so and again, that's the same delta nine you would get at a dispensary. Same exact delta nine you would get in a dispensary. Without the tax. Yeah. Except for regular like retail tax. Yeah. Tax, just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> retail tax. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Why do the terpenes determine the strength rather than the THC delta nine amount? So uh, the terpenes don't determine the strength, but the terpenes can definitely add to the experience that you get when you consume the product, uh, whether it's by edible or whether it's uh, through vaping. Um, the, the entourage the, effect? Um, I, I think entourage is more relative towards cannabinoid content. But there are some studies that talk about how terpenes do enhance or can help, um, you know, make you feel the effects a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people that use aromatherapy all the time, right? Mm -hmm. these, these people like with lavender, essential oils, all these sprays and yeah, to them, relax them, you know, to me, it doesn't do much, but, you know, that's it's me. Well, it might be a placebo effect. It could be. It could be, but could be. Um, I, I mean, citrus is always, um, citrus is in, uh, well, limonene is in citrus, and limonene is also in a lot of sativa, more uplifting strains. Facts. People use citrus for energy or the citrus essential oils. I don't mean to do the air quote because um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm not saying it's placebo or not. Uh, there's not enough research for sure, but people use citrus for energy, um, and limonene is in citrus and also in like sour diesel yeah. or green crack. Yeah, correct. 
What's next? What does Delta 9 have that Delta 8 and Delta 10 do not? Okay, so uh, molecule again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's the, it's where the double bond is located on the uh, the the carbon in the ring. Um, that's that's really it. That's the only thing it has that Delta 8 and Delta 9 don't. But, but that placement same. affects the binding. The placement does affect the binding affinity. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Next. The products made by Mellow Fellow were really strong in the beginning, and I really enjoyed them. Uh, they, I really enjoyed that. Now they've gone very weak. When does Mellow Fellow plan to get back up there? So you built the tolerance, my friend. <laughs> um, nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed about the Mellow Fellow products. Uh, you know, one thing is we do pride ourselves on consistency. We um, always try and and make sure that everything is within a reasonable uh, um, uh, variation of, of potency. So, yeah, I mean, man, you just got to consume more gummies or take a tolerance break and get back to it so you can feel the same way. Um, you know, I will say, though, we're not chasing milligrams. Um, and if you notice in a, a lot of our edibles and most of our blends, uh, we're, we're big on blends. We always pair minors, non-psychoactives with psychoactive cannabinoids. Um, if you're used to taking other brands that are putting crazy amount of milligrams in their edibles, we're, we're never going to be that brand. We don't we don't believe in that. Um, and it's just not we're not going to we're not going to see that on Mellow Fellow. Yeah, we've always been. um mellow yeah it's 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 about being mellow and, and again from from a safety perspective um we are in an unregulated industry mm -hmm. we don't want to uh be the brand that you know god forbid something happens and a kid gets into the edibles you know it'd be a 300 milligram edible and they go to the hospital um you know it, it's I, I don't think you need 300 milligrams there are some people that do need heavier doses because they're dealing with certain conditions and i respect that um, you know, that's, that's just not, um, not something that we're looking to do right now, but maybe in the future, maybe on the medical side, when we go, when we go into, you know, certain States, we will have a very high dose. Um, but it will be in a much more controlled fashion. And a question from our commenters, Julia Rose, I love your wellness line. Is there enough Delta nine in full spectrum CBD for me to show up positive on a drug test? Yes. I would not consume anything with Delta 9 or any full spectrum CBD if you need to pass a drug test. Um, literally, even a little bit can make you fail, and mm -hmm. we don't want to be responsible for that. Okay. Um, you know, you might be able to pass. It depends how long, you know, in between you consume it. And, and, you know, it is in small quantities, but I would stay away from that. Stick to, stick to things with isolate that are made from CBD isolate. And Christine B, what makes Mellow Fellow better than your competitors? So I, 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 I took a long time formulating these products. I looked at it from a pharmacological perspective on what blend of cannabinoids would work best to achieve certain feelings-based um, uh, products. And I've noticed a lot of my competitors or a lot of our competitors just do a hodgepodge of cannabinoids. Um, they don't know if that actually works or not. And then if you look at their COAs, it's really a, a lot for marketing. Um, you know, we, we hate when people um, use false marketing to be able to get sales. We don't, we don't believe in that. So you see a lot of like THCX, THCJD, THC this, THCABC. Um, we don't do that. Uh, we believe in transparency, um, you know, honesty and trust and, and just putting out a quality product time in, time out. Nicely put. You're and, you know, we're, we're also we're friends with everybody in the industry We're um, and, you know, people come to JJ uh, for advice on that and uh, like on formulating and milligram caps. Uh, we are a strong we are in it for the long run. We're not here for quick money grabs um, and just want to make sure that this is a safe industry that's going to last. Agreed. I've told I mean, I, I sit on uh, I sit on the board for. Um, the AHAA and we uh, spent a lot of time on education and lobbying. Um, you know, we, we want to bring regulations to our industry so that there's longevity. 
um, you know, doing crazy things like this is is not going to keep this industry around. So, uh, you know, I, I always try and sway my friends slash competitors away from doing that. But, you know, not much more that I can we're do. Friends, yeah, we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Oh, oh, no more. OK, cool. All right. Well, then I think it is time to uh, announce our lucky winner. Today, the winner will win a $900 travel gift card to the airline of their choosing. Um, and we'll call them after to get that info. But drum roll, please. And the winner is Gina SQ. Congratulations. Woo! We'll be calling you soon, Gina. Um, and today, um, I think we're, we're going to have an edible sesh. JJ, why don't you come sit over here and let's taste some edibles. All right. So, you know, I, Linz, I actually have one question here that yeah. we got in as a submission that I'd like to talk about. Okay. Okay. It's not on here, but it's on my computer screen. Okay. So, um, people asked, uh, we have had no issues with Delta nine. However, customers are asking specifically for Delta 11 and THCA. Um, do you have products more specific to customers, pain relief, lotions, and all that stuff? So one, I want to talk about our wellness line. So mm -hmm. yes, we do have uh, products that we've just formulated that are specifically for uh, pain relief that are non-psychoactive. So you can use every day, you can take it in the morning. Um, we have our tinctures and I know the lotions are going to be coming out soon. Topicals, I think next week. Yep. Should... yep. Um, and then I do want to talk about THCA. So this is like a new hot topic that everyone is talking about. Um, THCA is the crystalline version of THC. When you melt that down, or when you heat it up to 220 degrees F for a certain period of time, it's about 30 minutes, it does turn into Delta 9. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go have some edibles now. All right, come on over here. So uh, today, in spirit of Delta 9, um, Delta 9 day, we can't smoke, so we're going to eat edibles. Um, and uh, no, I got the edibles. Um, we're going to try our new holiday seasonal uh, selections. This is a new thing we're doing. Every quarter, we're going to have a new selection um, of edibles that will come out. Uh, and so th today we're trying, uh, we have the option of cranberry, sweet potato, marshmallow, or candy cane. Candy cane, 100%. All right, cool. No All right, well, I love me my candy oh, canes. All right. So with the... Uh, these are 10 milligrams D9 and 10 milligrams CBD. And we have a new, uh, we're, we're working with a new edible formula. People were complaining that they were a little soft. These are some firm edibles these days. Um, nice little chew to them. Mm -hmm. It tastes good. You really taste like anything. Yeah, we're really happy with the manufacturer too. He's a good friend of ours and he's got like all the certifications you could ask for. NSF, ISO. Ed GMP. Edibles are the only product that we don't make in house. Correct. We make the oil. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, we also have a lab. It's called our Vita Labs that supports Mellow Fellow. Um, and we make all of our own oil in house. Uh, we fill all of our vapes in house and package everything else in house. And the only thing we don't make are these edibles because this guy just does it way better. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're good at. Yeah, we're we've tried. We're, that's not us. <laughs> we're good with the science and, and R and D and all those things, but with gummies it's, it's, and it's, it's a, it's a huge, uh, um, you know, capital endeavor to be able to build out a facility like that. You know, we've already, um, you know, done our fair share of that on the lab side and, uh, the production. So. Yeah. And we're also, we're right now doing an upgrade and we'll do a tour of the lab. Um, probably next month it'll be already. Uh, I would say, yeah, within the next 30 to 45 days, we'll definitely do a tour. We're going to be doing some film, uh, filming there. We'll go live there. I'll actually love to do that to show yeah, everyone the processes of what we do. I know we had a couple questions about like, Oh, what makes your lab different than other people's labs? We'll, we'll, we'll be able to show you soon. Um, and go through all the processes. Yes, they are made in Florida. They're actually made in Daytona, Florida. Um, and then, so for these uh, samplers or the, these sachets, we have, uh, if you spend a hundred dollars, you get a free pack of all three of these to try all the flavors. Um, sweet potato They're good. marshmallow is my favorite one. Uh, I'm a big fan of the sweet potato marshmallow uh, casserole for Thanksgiving. And it's really tastes just like that. 
I'm a big peppermint guy. Yeah, it was the peppermint or was pretty good. Candy cane. Oh, candy cane. Yeah. Awesome. What's the other one? What's that green one? The green one is cranberry. Oh. That one's pretty good too. It's uh. tastes really nice. Cool. Well, happy Delta Nine Day. Happy Delta Nine Day. I'll, I'll be waiting for this to kick in. Cool. Stay mellow, y'all. Don't forget to take advantage of the sale today. <laughs>